the big calls on all the big races. Welcome to What a Shout, brought to you by the Racing Post and sponsored by Betfred. Plenty to look forward to in today's programme. We're going to be focusing mainly on four the four key races from Newbury, the Hungerford being uh, being one of them, and also big race of the year taking place at Ripon, the super competitive Great St Wilfred, a six furlong sprint handicap. Let's meet the team. I've missed you, Keels. It feels like it's been really? weeks. You're the one who's been away. I've been on every week. <laughs> Well, no, you were at oh, Goodwood or somewhere. And, ah, yes, I was at Goodwood. And yeah, then you're I right. was away, right. and it yeah, just yeah, seems yeah. like it's been a long time. Goodwood was fun, but it was as wet there as it is now. I know. Great, isn't it? What a summer we've had. And you're dressed for sort of Portugal well, at yeah, the moment. The sun's coming out later on, so I'm told. So I'm going to snip <laughs> off for a game of golf with a bit of luck. The main thing is it's going to stop raining by the time you play golf. <laughs> now, one thing I've noticed hang on, you've hit some form, haven't you, recently? Yeah, I've banged in some winners for once. Yeah, it was nice. Like, you know, I had two, two horrific months, June to July. But. Uh, yeah, it's come back a bit, so yeah. I know, right. every time I pick up the racing post now, I'd seen on when I was away that you were bashing in winners left, right and centre, so you're, you're here in order. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully it carry on. Good stuff. Hello, d -Rod. how are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm well, thanks, Emma. Yeah, yourself? Yeah, good. You're looking still quite summery as well. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's summer, isn't it? Although it is pouring down everywhere. 12 mils yeah. of rain at yeah. Newbury already this morning. Mm. Yeah, it was, it was pouring down when I came in this morning, but... Um, yeah, we, we know we know what the ground's going to be like, don't we? We know it's going to be on the soft side. That's when it gets a bit confusing, isn't it? We don't know what it's going to be, and if we do, at least we know in Newbury now, it's going to be on the soft side of good, and we can work to that, can't we? Well, yeah, but how much is going to keep coming? We kind of know. Yeah, I think we kind of know. I don't we kind of know. I don't think we're going to be looking at heavy, are we? But we're definitely going to be looking soft side of good, aren't we? Do you not think this keeps happening? Because quite often, well, obviously every Friday we do this programme, and we have the same debate. You get your little weather map out, and it's like there's 15 well, yeah. I mean, mils always... forecast there. We are in August, and this has happened all yeah. the summer. Yeah, I, mean, I always think that you know, when it comes to punting, I find jump racing far easier because you don't have, you know, you know what the ground's going to be like pretty much all the time then, don't you? Like, you know, I mean, <laughs> well, it's, it's just, just soft. Just, just soft all the way through, isn't it? Like, you know what I mean? So you, you don't have that variable and of course you have draw issues as well at, at new, uh, uh, on the flat which we're no doubt going to talk about when it comes to the great and Wilfred but mm. but yeah just changeable going uh, all the time watering rain comes down suddenly the ground's an awful lot different than you expected it to be in fact most of my anti-post punts this week bets that I placed on Monday I consider them already sunk uh. Do you find jumping easier then? Uh, I, find, I, I just find it more more reliable for me to punt on yeah I know, it's, it's quite funny. I, I, I do very often have a really poor spell in the height of summer for some reason. <laughs> I'm blaming it on the ground. <laughs> Matt from Betfred joins us once again. Matt, how are you? Yeah, no, but just just seeing Keels in the, his golfing kit and the <laughs> irony we talk about, obviously, Keels about always backing up winners or the time before they go and win. Uh, a lad here who's all over Lucas Glover. Uh, a month ago when he missed the cut and he didn't back him for the next twice and he's gone and won twice. So <laughs> it's not just your racing punting where kills. We've got some golf bows here as well, so it's not just you. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do that as well. I used to bet on golf and they used to win next time out or a couple of starts later. So, yeah, it does yeah, that matter. Yeah, 66 to 1 twice. Oh. Well, I know we've got a good system going on now. We just pile in next time. It's it's um it's it's been a good formula over the last couple of months or so, <laughs> and haunted you in the process. But hey, we'll touch on that when we get into the races. There isn't a better time to sign up to the Racing Post Members Club. You can get your first two months for just nine ninety nine. Check this out. Are you ready to take your passion for horse racing to the next level? With Racing Post Members Club, you gain exclusive access to the best racing insights, analysis and tools. Immerse yourself in award-winning content from interviews with the sport's biggest stars to race previews and behind-the-scenes features. Get the inside track with early access to the Racing Post digital newspaper from 9pm in the evening and daily selections from our expert tipsters. Racing Post Members Club is your ultimate ticket to the thrilling world of racing. Subscribe today and pay just £9.99 per month for the first two months with the code SUMMER. See the link in the video description for more information. Terms apply. Charlie Bishop joins us live on the programme. Thanks for coming on. How's your morning been so far? Yeah, quite wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of rain forecast, isn't there, at Newbury today and tomorrow. Um, who have you been riding out for and, and just spin us through what's been going on? Um, I've been actually in Archie Watson's this morning, but um, normally I do a couple of days a week in Eves and a couple of days a week in Shannon's, so I try and keep myself busy. And regarding the season, in your eyes, how, uh, how's it going? Are you on sort of target for, for what you were hoping? 
Yeah, I guess the, the aim is always to probably try and find some nice two-year-olds, and we seem to have done that again with with Eve and with Shannon's, and obviously um, Jambi is obviously meant to run tomorrow in the Hungerford. The, the rain won't be ideal, but him winning the John O'Gorn to Haydock was was a real real good day. Yeah, we're, we're going to start with Jambi actually because it, it's an obvious starting point. Won the race last year, as you said, a horse you know very well. You you won on you you won on him at Haydock. Um, how would you assess the chances, and what are your views on on the ground and what it might be? I mean, if the ground was to stay good, good, or um, even be on the quicker side, I, th- I think he's probably the one to beat. But um, unfortunately, we've had quite a lot of rain this morning, so hopefully, it dries up for the rest of today and tomorrow. And um, he's very ground dependent. But obviously, if the ground was to come up, sort of good good fast ground he'd have a massive chance it's been so frustrating we're the middle of august and yet this keeps happening doesn't it you get to the weekend the day before and suddenly you know rain appears from nowhere it's 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 been difficult yeah it's typical we've actually had quite a nice week and it's um i think everyone was drying up and just as we've got back to good ground obviously it's the heavens have opened again but um i'm afraid there's not an awful lot we can do about the weather yeah, I was talking to Paul Keeley, who was saying there was 12 mils forecast this morning. How wet's it been? Um, it's been pretty wet since sort of six o'clock this morning. It's just it's just easing off now. So hopefully if it's dry for a couple of hours before racing today and then um, hopefully if it dries throughout the day, we'll have nice ground tomorrow. Yeah, dry, 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 drying wind is exactly what, what you want for tomorrow. So you'd put him up as the, the one they've all got to beat. Totally agree with that. He was pretty impressive when he won at Haydock. Yeah, he was very impressive. Um, I mean, he did it very easily, didn't he? I was able to kind of take my time and ride a race in him and sort of pick him up as and when I wanted. And I think he showed that um, on it on his day over seven furlongs on on his sort of preferred faster ground, he, he's a very, very good horse. And just having a look at the field, it's it's quite an open race. What do you fear and sort of see as your main dangers? Yeah, obviously, Sacred not being declared was... Um, was handy. <laughs> yeah. In everyone's eyes, but... Um, I mean, there's still a lot of horses in there with um, that you have to have the utmost respect for, especially Chinda, I suppose, after his run the lock was very, very good and um, it's a track that he, he likes. And I think he brings probably the highest level of form bar Jambi into the race, you know, with his rating of 115, he's probably the one, the one to beat. Quick spin through some of your other rides. We'll start with Punch Bull Flyer in the 225, makes a seasonal debut, but um, you've ridden him before, haven't you? It's a, it's a horse you know. Yeah, he was at Eves. Um, he's a proper mud lover, so he would like it if it kept raining. Um, he was a he was a very good horse for his owners. I think he he must have won sort of seven or eight races for us. So um, he's a horse I know very well, and I'll be looking forward to getting back on him. Do you know much about Brindley? This one makes his debut in the four hundred five. He sat on him at home. Yeah, yeah, I've had a sat on him a few times. Um, I actually sat on him yesterday morning as well. He's um, he's a lovely big horse. He'll come on heaps for his race course debut, but. Um, I think it looks quite a hot event, but um, he'll he'll definitely run respectably. And then a quick line on Greystoke in the 440 for Alan King. Yeah, um, again, Alan's horses are running really well. Um, his horses also love the track at Newbury. Greystoke is um, a consistent performer. You go back a couple of runs to him winning at Chester. If he, if he was to come back to that form, he, he'd have a great chance. Just touching on, you mentioned Eve there. Looking back on career highlights, I suppose, 2018 Queen Anne, accidental agent, must have been right up there. Yeah, um, it's a day I'll never forget. And I think Eve and obviously her mum bred him as well. So, no, um, my connection with Eve has been fantastic. She's extremely loyal to me. Um, we work well as a team and we're trying to find the next accidental agent, I guess. Yeah, but she's, she, as you've already touched on, you're always looking for the new two-year-olds coming through. She's got some nice ones, hasn't she, this year? Yeah, really nice. Obviously, uh, Bob Slay won the Woodcut. Juniper Berries runs today. She was fourth in the Queen Mary. Uh, good second in the conditions race at Glorious Goodwood. And um, a two-year-old called Mr. Sketch that I managed to win nine and three-quarter lengths on or something at Salisbury the other day. I, I saw that. <laughs> it absolutely pulls it up. <laughs> yeah, but he's, um, he's obviously quite exciting. So. Accidental agent, going back to him, you don't ride him tomorrow purely because I assume they want to, to, uh, to claim the three pounds. But you will have seen him at home. Is he in good order for the handicap at three o'clock? Yeah, he's in great form. Um, like you say, uh, Mia and Georgia seem to spend more time riding him than me these days. But it's great. <laughs> he's, he's been an absolute pleasure to everyone in the in the yard. He's in fantastic form. And it's just great that he's still in love with the game. At, um, I think he's nine now. So 
people kind of say, oh, he's quite old, would you not retire him? But they're, they're a long time retired, and he's not a horse that likes being turned out in the field. So um, he still gets sport every day and runs sort of once a month. So he's a very happy horse. And I mean, if, if, his, if he turns up with any of his back class and those handicaps, he's very dangerous. I think it's so much fun and really important for yards to have horses like him, isn't it? You know, that, that very much is this kind of star of the show um, and s still in love with the game. As you say, the day he's not will be different, but he enjoys his racing. So why not, um, why not keep doing it? Well, listen, thank you very much for joining us. I pray for your sake we don't get any more rain and good luck on Jumpy tomorrow. Thank you ever so much. Thanks, Emma. Good to speak to Charlie Bishop. Let's crack on with the racing from Newbury and we'll start with the Jeffrey Freer. Uh, a group three over a mile five and a half. Matt, how do they bet here? Yeah, well, the rain's made a difference here, as you would expect, of course. A rest, he's on a bit of a retrieval mission. But catch your mind back to Chester when it was very soft. He was very impressive, of course, uh, in winning the Chester of ours. He's three to one, but I'm not, I think that they will flip flop the more rain that comes down. Support behind Frankie's right. Kamari's a five to two favourite, is a Queen's Vars winner. Three to one then at a rest. But say all the support has been for the rest at this point. And Klondike, another three year old in there at four to one. Or William Haggis, and we've got Shandos off the back of a long layoff, 11 to 2. Jack Darcy, who won with a close call of 15 to 2. But the minute, the rest is second favourite. I'm not sure for how long, though. Yeah, totally agree with you. When I looked at this race, this this race, I should say, and these notes were written yesterday, I was obviously assuming I hadn't looked at the forecast ahead like you had, Kiels. I was assuming the, the ground was going to be quickish, and I thought the race lacked a bit of depth on quickish ground, Kamari. Um, but actually, a rest on soft ground, that's a completely different kettle of fish, isn't well, he it? He stands out, doesn't he? I mean, he could be nearer 6-4, to four, couldn't he? I mean, he's absolutely smashed Adelaide River in the, uh, in the chest of ours. Um, earlier in the season, uh, bolted up, and you just see by his action that he's a soft ground horse. I mean, you know, he went off favourite for the Derby purely because he was ridden by Frankie de Tori in his last <laughs> yeah. ever Derby. Uh, it was absolutely ludicrous, uh, and he hated the ground again at, at Ascot last time. But it's coming in his favour, and and you know, uh, I can see him going off six to four. To be honest, I think he'll, I think he'll end up very short. I mean, like you at the start of the week, I thought he won't even run. Uh, because mm. it was, you know, it, it looked like it was going to dry up all week uh, and, and be quick ground. I, I couldn't have him at all. I actually backed Jack Darcy because he's a, he's um, he's ground versatile, and I thought he might get an easy lead. Um, I suppose he does obviously handle some cut because it was a good run to finish second to Hamish, even if he got beat four lengths in the end. Uh, he's he's got a chance if he gets if he gets an easy lead, but at the end of the day, I think on soft ground, the rest. Second in the Group One last year, very easy win of a Classic trial. He's just—he's probably a class above. And horses like Kamari just don't win very often. Yeah, he did win at Newmarket, didn't he, Graham? Yeah. Last time, but but yeah, it was a weird <laughs> when race. I looked at the price, I was like, let's get this beat, and it looks mm. like the, he's now going to drift. Yeah, you can see him going off a lot bigger than he is. Four to one you? or something. Yeah. Maybe. Um, the race he won at Newmarket was a strange race, wasn't it? He went off in front and the two fancied horses were out the back, weren't they? Phantom Flight and something else, I can't remember the favourite. And um, he just stayed, the front two just stayed there, didn't they? And it was one of those days at Newmarket, which can happen on the July course, where everything that went to the front stayed there. Uh, maybe there was a, a tower wind of some kind, mm. I can't remember. but. Uh, it can I, happen, can't uh, it, at Newmarket? I fancy. certainly got a feel after that race. I remember, I, I really fancied Phantom Flight. I remember saying, oh, yeah, it's just a strange race. Um, and he, he doesn't win very often, like Kiel said. He's won from his last 12. You know, you, you're looking at a rest. I think he's won three from seven already, so he's, he's got a decent strike rate. And his last two runs, quite easy to ignore on fast ground. All of his soft ground form is better than anything else in the race. Like Kiel's, I could see him going off a lot shorter than the current price. I think mm. he'll win. Yeah, agree. I think we all agree. Arrest, get on now, because <laughs> he's only going to shorten. The 225 is a sprint handicap over five furlong that looks oh, super tricky, Matt. Can you shed any light here? <laughs> the betting suggests exactly the same, so I'm afraid not, no. But uh, let's have a look. We've got, obviously, Libra Tiger we saw the other day in the racing league. Uh, it was a little bit disappointing. wasn't being too far, though. Joint felt with four a day. He's two from three under a Sheen Murphy. So that's in there at 11 to two, and that's got a soft ground win his name as well. Harry Brown was just pinned on his debut on soft ground at Yarmouth last year and you know, won his side in the, uh, the Palace of Holyrood House at Royal Ascot. I won't discount that one. He was out of handicap or out of the weight, sorry, last time out. 7-1 to under Hayley Turner. Right at the bottom there we heard from Charles Bishop. Punch ball flyer. Every single uh, drop around the falls will be in that one's favour. Remember uh, obviously him 
battering opposition up in heavy ground here as well. But they drop down to five. It becomes a test. He's of interest in his first start for John O'Shea. It's interesting to say on move stables because Bishop has retained the ride. So he's one to consider if the ground does get really tested. Harry Brown was the name of my first ever winner. Pontifrat back in the day, but certainly Ooh. not this Harry Brown. It was so long ago that the names come back around. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, I thought we had a good chance. I um, hope so. Harry Brown, yeah. It, it was a good race, wasn't it, the one that he ran in last time? I remember saying, I can't remember who I was talking to, but I remember saying, God, that five furlong handicap at Ascot today is really good. Um, and, and he weren't beaten that far, and he didn't get a clear run that day either. He, he got chopped off in his run. Um, yeah, I can see him go really well. I don't know if he'll handle the ground like Matt said. He was placed on his debut on soft ground. Showed a lot of promise on that. Uh, mm. On that, I don't think I don't think it bothered him at all. I mean, he's, he's out of by, by Harry Angel. He went on anything, didn't yeah. he? Won, yeah. He won on, on bad ground at Haydock in the, in the Sprint Cup, didn't he? Mm. I think I think he'll handle it. I'm, I, I think he's the one to beat myself. I mean, I've been all over him all season, and he's been. Uh, a little bit disappointed. I mean, at Royal Ascot, he did win on his side and he won quite comfortably. And I thought we've got to keep an eye on him for, for, from now. So I had a good bet on him uh, last time at Ascot. And yes, he didn't get a run. Uh, it was really galling to see the horse that won it, the big board, because he was the one that he'd beaten on that on his side at Royal Ascot. Uh, so um, it was a little bit disappointing that day, even allowing for the fact that he didn't get a run. But I think it's worth another chance. Got to remember, he was four pound out of the handicap last time as well. So he's He's off a four pound lower mark. I think he'll handle the ground and there's still there's still some upside in him. Libra Tiger ran in the uh, racing league at Windsor the other day and got not got carried across the track. Uh, won very easily on soft ground at Sandown a time before. So mm. uh, I think he's got a chance. Uh, and yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fair old fan of um, punch bowl flyer. If, if the trainer switch has uh, brightened him up a little bit, then he's on a very dangerous mark of 86, isn't he? Cause and he'll light the ground. He was, we heard that he's a hundred horse in the past. Whether he's really a five furlong performer or not, no, because he's pretty much stuck to six furlongs most of his life, isn't he? But um, it's Harry Brown for me. There's still some upside with him. And, um, you know, I've, I've had him down as a potentially decent sprinter, and I think he's going to get there at some point. Mm. Yeah, what do you think of Masonic? He, I thought he could run well. He's got a lot of good all weather form. Doesn't run very often on the on the turf, but he's by a mason. Mm. They all like he soft ground. It, yeah. I think he's run really well, and he's one start on good soft ground on turf, and he's quite well handicapped as well. But but again, Kiel's a nice thing in from the same hymn street because I'm. Yeah, on I mean the thing about ground. Masonic is his is his form. You know, best RPR is eighteen pound lower on turf than it is on the all weather. It's a big difference, and his mm. handicap mark is only five pound different. Yeah. So be a little bit worried about him. He don't run on turf very often, does he? So he doesn't get the opportunity to, to, to show his true ability. To flourish. Well, no, he no. may. To flourish. Yeah, he might. <laughs> well, following on from this at 3 o'clock is the 0 to 100 7 furlong handicap. Again, it's a very open affair, Matt. Yeah, it certainly is. I suppose we were four places in that previous race uh, as well. Let's look at this one again. Open mind to big price. Uh, sorry, 11 to 2 the field. Classic 7 to 1. That one has got a soft ground victory. Uh, to his name for Richard Hannon, a three or seven to one. Then the ground will go against Bless him. He's at nine to one. Same as Spangled Mac. And Hectic and Scholarship. There's a neck between them here over Truck and Trip back in April. Uh, and they're off the same mark of a pound between them here again as well. So uh, Scholarship Blink has gone for the first time. He, he gifted last time out a couple of weeks ago. It was his first start for a couple of months. It ran like he needed it. He may be of interest at nine to one. Hectic has got a lot to play with him at the but again, it's one of those uh, decent handicaps, all the usual suspects lining up, the old boys, accidental agent, lethal nymph, another tricky punter's puzzle to solve. Good old accidental agent, nine I think he is, the 2018 Queen Anne winner at 33 to one, shocked a few on that day, uh, and was certainly Charlie Bishop. Not this Bishop's. man, not me. Not this man, I know, I, I, we were talking about this, well, not with you, and someone reminded me that you were all over it. Yeah, yeah, I love him. I mean, two of my favorite horses in training around this race, bless him, an accidental agent. Uh, I well, bless backed, him will be held I up. actually backed, <laughs> well, yeah, obviously, yeah, I backed <laughs> bless him earlier in the week thinking it'd be fast ground because it was like one of the worst races he's, he's, he's running for a while, wouldn't it? Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's a weak class two handicap. But obviously he can't, he can't win on soft grounds, just not him. I mean, mm. you know, David Simcock said to me years ago he needs it like a road. And, you know, most of his form suggests that's true. Yeah. Accidental Agent, on the other hand, doesn't really mind. Yes, his Queen Anne victory came on fast ground, but he's got some very good form on soft ground uh, to his name too. He's always run well, and on the few times he's run at Newbury, uh, he, he ran well in two um, lockinges. 
um, finished third in one of them, sixth the year that he won the, won the Queen Anne. Um, that form is ancient now, obviously, and it's, it's, it's meaningless when, when, when it comes to this, but, but he has been slipping steadily down a handicap and showing that he's coming back to form. Uh, and, uh, you know, he was fifth in the uh, Bunbury Cup, fifth last time in the racing league at Chepstow, getting going a bit late for Mia Nichols each time. Georgia Doby's back on board. She's the only one to have won on him since the Queen Anne victory. Uh, she won last year, and that was, that was off a mark in the hundreds. I think he's going to run well because a test at seven furlong is what, what he's going to want, and yeah. it'll be more of a test now that, now that it's got into the ground. And, yeah, I think he's going to run well, so that, that's the one I'm going to back. Uh, I'd be tempted by Popmaster if it didn't get too soft. Um, never used to think he, had, he he wanted seven furlong, but he was finishing strongly when he when just beat at Newbury a couple of starts ago. Then won on soft ground at Ascot, which he never really wanted before. Uh, you thought that was against him, uh, and then he was running on fairly well, having not got the best of runs in the international at Ascot last time. I just think the combination of soft ground and seven furlong might find him out. So uh, it's accidental agent for me. I think he might still be good enough to get another win on the board. Gerard, what have you got uh, up your sleeve here? Yeah, I mean, I, I see, see the race very similar t to Kiel's. Um, when I looked at it, I didn't think it was a very strong race, and I thought that the class droppers at the top were the two to be interested in. Bless him, an accidental agent. And when I was looking at the race last night, I, I, I didn't know the rain was coming. was coming. I thought, well, bless him's the one here. He's just getting in nicely, just one pound above the ceiling. He, he'll outclass them. But I woke up this morning, walked in the office, and this fellow next to me <laughs> said, oh, they've had eight meals, and now they've had 12 meals. And he definitely don't want soft ground, bless him. Mm. So, uh, as a result, I, I, I've switched to you accidental agent as well. I, I actually think that he's always wanted soft ground. I, I always had it in my mind that he really, really wanted a bit of cut. Although, obviously, he did win that, that race at Ascot on, on quick ground. So, he goes on anything. I just think that... that the, the cutting the ground over seven will slow the others down, and he's obviously nine, isn't he? Mm. He, he, he? Someone said to me the other day, horses get quicker as they get older. I'm not entirely sure that is true. <laughs> I think maybe he just had an old, an old horse, and he, he was kind of making up that theory. To me, they get a little bit slower, and they, you know the ground can sometimes slow the others down and help these older horses out. You see it time and time again in the middle of the winter when you get 12 and 13 year olds. Like when, when the ground gets really, really deep, they're very difficult to beat. I always find so. I think it will just slow the others down enough for accidental agent to catch him over seven here. Goodness me, we only need one of you on this program. It's literally agree, agree, <laughs> agree. This agree. never happens either. It never happens, no. no. I know, mm. I know. Well, 15 minutes later, we, um, we go north and we go to Ripon for the great St. Wilfred. Um, Matt, how do we bet here? Yeah, fair play to the agree on this one. Another <laughs> wide open sprint handicap as always, of course. So we've got Summergan top of the market. If it's a big valuable sprint handicap on a Saturday, you know Summergan will be throwing his hat into the ring. Hopefully he's on his best behaviour. He's been on really, wasn't he? Goodwood, which isn't like him. 11 to 2 favourite there for Danny Tudor from David O'Mara. The Stewards Consolation winner, Monsieur Coney, is at 7 to 1. Uh, one of Beasley placing a Gene Orr, who I think got a four day ban for that ride. He's in there at 7 to 23 pound. How we know he likes it off. Go to blue. 8 to 1 to Fierce Starlight will set the pace 10 to 1, 12 to 1 as well, Dreams for Gold, and also 12 to 1 Baby. The significant thing, all those that have mentioned drawn low in 1 and 7, those top seven, uh, top 6 in the market. So, really interesting, obviously, the market suggesting that far side may be the place to be this week. Yeah, key point. Um, the draw, Graham. Do we agree on this? I don't think we do, do we? Wow. Um, the, 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 if you look purely at the stats, right, it tells you there's nothing in it. It's pretty even across the track, right? But Kiel's going to tell you different. Away you go. Well, it, it, it is different because your, your, your draw is coming out of the numbers of the stalls they came out of. But in seven of the last ten, ten years, they won on the stand. The, the winner came on the stand side, uh, and two of those were drawn low. They were drawn six and six and eight, but in races when there were. 13 and 14 runners rather than 20. Yeah. Now, one of them, in, in, in the year one of them won, there were seven non-runners because it lashed down with rain overnight and made the ground soft. And when there are non-runners, it drags the hello drawn horses into the middle of the track, which is where you really don't want to be because they'll they split into two groups. Yeah. It'll be one side or other. Uh, and I don't know whether that'll happen this time, but there is loads of rain forecast overnight at Ripon. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a, 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 a yeah. currently a worse forecast than they had that at Newbury this morning. So... Again, we, we, we're probably looking at soft ground um, and there might be non-runners. Now, having said that, I think it's a case of 
it's fairly even both sides. It just depends on the pace, and there's plenty of pace on the far side among the low numbers. Uh, and I'd be full of hope that another wonderful old favourite, and who is the favourite, Summergan, will mm. win. A um, bit like last year, he's taken his time to come to hand on turf this year, but he ran a cracker last time with fourth to Abarama Gold, and you cannot argue with that form, can you? Because Abarama Gold just won the Stewards Cup. He got, he actually got upset in the stalls there, but I mean, I mean, pretty much all of us were upset that day. It was a miserable day, wasn't it? Brutal <laughs> down there it was. Like, you know, so I'm not going to hold that against him. And he, obviously he hasn't had to run through that bog, uh, you know, and, and it was a right slog for him in there. So, so he's just, he's just in form. Uh, he hit form at this sort of time last year, won a big race at York before winning the Air Gold Cup. Um, off, a, off a fair bit higher mark than he is now, I think seven pound higher mark than he is now. So he's still got the ability. I think he's the one to beat. He's running this race twice. He's drawn on the far side both times. So he's, he's drawn there again. He actually won his side both times, <laughs> but unfortunately finished fourth and second. But I mean, he's got, to, he's got to have a massive chance. I did also back Sophia Starlight, who ran an absolute cracker at Goodwood, given the saddle slip really early last time. And she's on that side too, but you need, to, you need a cover. So. Uh, I've gone for an outsider on the stand side as well, Hyper Focus, who has some really good form at, at Ripon. He's, uh, he's won... Uh, Ripon's it, funny as well, because yeah. it really is undulating. And there are, okay, not these, because most of these are old pros and they've been mm. there and done it at Ripon. But it is very like that, and a lot of horses mm. just don't act there, don't yeah, they? Yeah, that's right, that's right, yeah. Uh, and he's yet, it's funny really enough, funny enough, he's yet another nine-year-old. Uh, it's getting quicker. Focus. <laughs> it's getting quicker. Yeah. But it's funny getting enough, quicker. two of two of the two of the best four runs of his life have actually come this season. One of them a win, beating um, uh, Intrinsic Bond on soft ground over four over five furlongs uh, in the spring, and another another decent run at Chester. He's, he's lost his form a little bit um, lately, but he is drawn nineteen. He has the pace to take advantage of that draw and he almost made all well, he made he did make all and won the far side very easily in in the consolation race for this against Ground a few years ago. So and you know he has got plenty of good whip and form to his name and he's a big, big price. For a sprint handicapper, Monshaw Cody wins an awful lot of races, don't he? Mm. Uh, you know, you don't usually see sprint handicappers win I think he's won seven of twenty and a few of those were against sixteen runner field. Obviously the um, Goodwood race last time, the yeah, consolation, consolation race. race. Mm. Runner up one last night. Yeah, if the ground comes right for him, which it, the, the ground is due to go soft, it, that will suit him. Our handicappers last time, they whacked him up 98, they gave him RPRs. Uh, the official handicapper only gave him three pound rise. So there's a bit of a disagreement, shall we say, between the race and post handicappers and the, uh, the BHA handicappers. Now we're gonna find out who's right, obviously on Saturday, but the fact that the runner-up, Capote's Dream, has come out and won since suggests that maybe the Racing Post lads have got it right. And if the Racing Post lads have got it right, then him running off 86 with an RPR of 98 quite, quite last well time in. out, he could still be well. dropped it to 97. Uh, they, yeah. They've sneaked in there. <laughs> they, they, they can do that. They have a, yeah. a little bit of rope to be able to go in and change as they like, but even at 97 and rather than 98, it's still, you know, he's still well ahead of his mark if our handicappers are right, and I think they might be. Good. Well, Newbury's feature race on the card comes up at 3.55. It is the Group 2 Hungerford Stakes. Richard Hannon is no stranger to having plenty of winners at Newbury. Of course, they've won this race plenty of times before. And Shindit looks probably likely to go a favourite, Matt, in a race that not too many of them really want much rain. No, exactly that, and that is the key, isn't it? I was looking through this, not a lot do want the, the wet stuff and the soft ground, and Chindit really included, like he's 5-2, to two. he's under the new ownership, I think he's been bought to, to stand uh, in the Far East, he's 5-2 to two to win this one, for say, Jumbi, 3-1 to one to retain his title, as you heard from the earlier, Pogo also doesn't mind it, uh, ran a little bit better at Newmarket last time out, that's 11-2, to must have share, 15-2, to two, the three-year-old, he's behind Nosser and Besto last time out, Marban, I thought he ran a cracker, at Glorious Goodwood again in the Lennox Stakes. I think his two best performances have come at that track. And then it's 10 to 1 par. But again, the ground is key because those towards the end of the market don't really like to get the toe in too much. No, we've heard about the chances of Jumbi from Charlie Bishop. Last year's winner would have such a big chance, but not with this rain around. Graham, what are, you, what are your thoughts? Are you looking further down the... Um, my initial thought was Shindit's <coughs> just better than these and he'll win. 
Uh, he's got really good form at Newbury, Newbury. hasn't he? Two yeah. of his three highest racing post ratings are at the track. Um, and when he finished second in the lock-ins, he looked like he was going to win, didn't yes. he? And then he got run down late over a mile. So you think seven will be ideal for him. He's a bit disappointed, wasn't he, in behind triple time, but fair enough. You know, he was still midfield. There was group one. This is group two. He should be too good for him, but what's the ground be gonna gonna be like? We don't know if he'll gone it. He's one on good soft. So there's there's a hope there that he might get through it. We know he does get a mile, so his stamina's not gonna be an issue if it does get testing. But I'm having seen the rain come in, I'm nowhere near as confident as I would have been on Chin Dip, but I yeah. think he's still by far the most likely winner. The one I wanna give mention to is Marban as well. I think uh, on really quick ground would have been very, very interesting. But again, I think he's another who probably doesn't want really soft ground. What do you think? Agree. Um, Kills. This is it. I mean... You <laughs> were convinced Pogo was going to win last time. And I said this to you earlier. And you said, well, he kind of did win on his side in a yeah. five or six round yeah, race. Yeah, then I looked at it and he actually um, didn't. <laughs> but he really won't be wanting. Uh, well, won't be. well, funnily enough, I, I, was, I, was, I was looking at this. Now, you know, I backed Chindit early in the week. Um, uh, Sacred was favourite. Yes. Uh, I thought, well, not that much come out already. This is you know, it's perfect for Chindit now. Yeah. And then the rain comes. Now, I mean, he's won one on soft ground. He was tailed off behind St. Mark's Basilica in the Jewist. Uh, and he's been taken out because of bad ground since, so Jumbie been taken out. And I looked at what horses have the best RPRs on ground as well as soft. Pogo comes out top, but only by a pound and at his beloved Newmarket. And the rest of his soft ground formings are good. So you yeah. worry about him too. And then he thought to himself, well, this is a race. He wasn't loving Newmarket last time, mm, was he? No, he didn't. You know, he, he, you know, he is seven now. That was a, Hang was, on, they get better as they get older. It was a much better. It was a much worse. Some of them do. <laughs> well, some of them, some of them, some of them hold their form, and he, had, he has held it for ages. That was another race. It that, was that one. That was a weird one. That it was, race. It was a weird race yeah. because obviously six runners and the managers. I think it was the same day as that Kamari race. Mm. I think it, it from was. Memory. Yeah, but well, it's one of those weird. races. This is one of those races where you've got horses at the front of the market that we know don't really want soft ground. Got horses in the middle of the market that haven't got any form on soft ground, so we don't know. Uh, and yet the next three best behind Pogo when it comes to soft ground are Witch Hunter, Misty Grey and Rhoda Ballow, which are all the outsiders. Uh, and Witch Hunter has obviously won at Buckingham Palace on fast ground, but he ran an absolute blinder uh, at Chester on soft ground um, fairly recently. Um, over seven furlong, fin finishes in a length behind Holgren. Um, that's, the, that's the second best run of his life on racing post rating, so he handles it. If he runs to that level, he's going to be in the frame, I think, and he's a 20 to one shot because a lot of these, a lot of these are going to run below form if they run at all. Mm. And that's the other thing we've we'd yeah, probably faced a, out, exactly. a ton of rule fours. But at the end of the day, connections might be thinking, well, this is a fairly weak group, group two. We might roll the dice and let them run, like, you know, because you know it's a you know it's a fair old prize. Um, but um, yeah, so I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to take a chance of which, which hunt are out of them. Um, because he's just been extremely consistent all year and he's won, run very well on soft ground twice this season. Well, before we get stuck into our weekend naps, go check out racingpost.com forward slash free bets to see how you may be able to get £200 of free bets. Naps, naps, naps. g -Rod, let's start with you. Uh, well, I'm going to go for a rest. <laughs> the one. I thought you said I'm going for a rest <laughs> this weekend. Going for a rest. No, a rest. I'm going for a rest. A rest? Yeah, a rest. <laughs> In the 150 at Newbury. So am I. You've yeah. just stolen my thunder. That's all right. He'll win, won't he? But the problem is, we'll, we'll, he might be short, might he, by the time. Do you think he could go off six to four tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can. I mean, if, if, if it keeps on raining uh, and it's soft. Could you get much on today or not? Sorry? Oh, could, 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 could you get much on today at what? Uh, would you get anything on at trees? Oh, it's 11 to 4, yeah. yeah. Four? No, I just need well, just by the time the end of the day comes, you'll have yeah. hoovered <laughs> up all that. Yeah. Yeah. 11 yeah. to 4 <laughs> <and> <laughs> the five He's currently tapping away <laughs> throughout the program. A little go. That's, that's why I bring the laptop in these days. Saying, oh, we're better back this. No. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could, I could nearly nap a, a rest as well, but I think Fortimore has a really big chance in the 240 at Ripon, which. 
uh, is a silver trophy. That race used to be the, the consolation race for the, for the Great St. Wilfrid, but it's a race that you have to win on your own now because they didn't even get enough runners last year. <laughs> so so it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a much weaker heat, but he's got some serious uh, rip and form. He's won three times at the track of higher marks than he's on now. He's got form figures this year of 4-2-2. Two, two. The four was a win on his side in a 15-runner race. Uh, and he was only beating a nose last time. I think he will run well. Good stuff. Well, I'm with you. You're going a for rest. a rest? Yeah. Yeah. I wish I was going for a rest. For I'm going, we're going golf. A rest. You're going for a <laughs> game a of rest. golf in your sort of summer kit in the rain. But, um, yeah. And then a couple of pints in the pub after? Um, yeah, just a couple. <laughs> Matt, best bet of the weekend. Yeah, I won't mind a rest as well. But no, I'm going to go for, for a horse that I've already tipped up in, in these pages before, and that's Divine Libra in the in the first and Newmark. Oh, the best bet would be a great to win that race, of course. But it's a great sight, isn't it? A like grey race at HQ. So yeah, Divine Libra. I'm hoping they get these thundery showers at Newmarket overnight into tomorrow. He's different horse on, on soft ground. I think six on soft ground, right up his street. One of those conditions for chest. He's a fair third and a three-old handicap last time out here over track and trip. And uh, hopefully, it takes us those rivals, he can come good for Charles Sills and James. Good stuff. And before we let you go, um, weekend plans, what are you going to be watching? Are you going anywhere? I'm not. I'm work, work, work all weekend. So we, oh. I'll be here in the studio, but at least I get to watch all the sport. And obviously, yeah, pretty racing this afternoon. It's a good race on Sunday as well, actually. Look forward to the Sunday series, Sandown. So good race at the core of the pre-morning. Got Pontefract listed action as well, of course. Uh, the Women's World Cup final. So yeah, busy weekend of sport and I'll be uh, working <laughs> well, the Breeders' Cup, believe it or not, is just a, a few months away. It's creeping up fast. How would you like to be heading out there? The Racing Post have got a great competition. Here's how you can get involved. Weekend plans for you both, Graham? Heading anywhere luxurious in the rain? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, earlier in the week, I said to, to the wife, I said, oh, it's going to be beautiful at Newmarket on Saturday. We'll go. And uh, now the forecast is not quite so nice, but I still think we might make the trip along to Newmarket. Ollie Merz is playing tonight. He there. is playing there tonight. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was tempted, I must admit. <laughs> He's a good Essex boy, Ollie. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll be, I'll be at Newmarket on, on Saturday. One of my friends was supposed to have a runner there, but it doesn't look like they're running him now. So Are I, you going to go? I mean, yeah. Raining or no rain? Yeah, yeah, rain or no rain. Good effort. I'll be there. It'll be, it should be a good day. Love that grey horse handicap. Bitro's on fire. It's been uh, laid out for that, I think. He won it two years ago. It's quite a fun race, that, isn't it, Kiels? What mm. do you think? Do you, do you like it or not? Uh, yeah, it is a fun race. A fun for spun spectacle to watch. I was trying to look at it and find a, uh, find a selection earlier on, but I couldn't. One well, of those I found it really, really hard, so I left it alone. But yeah, it's a good spectacle. Great Brilliant. Fun. Good stuff. <laughs> Until next time, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next Friday. Mm -hmm.